In this video, we're going to look at position, velocity, and acceleration with integrals. All right, so when we've talked about position, velocity, and acceleration before, it's been with derivatives. So the derivative, so if this is the position, so we'll call s of t the position, then we know that if I take the derivative of the position, I get the velocity. And if I take the second derivative of the position, which is the same thing as the derivative of the velocity, I get the acceleration. Okay. What we want to do is we want to go backwards. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go up this way, meaning that if I integrate the acceleration, I'm going to get the velocity plus a constant. And then if I integrate all of this, I'm going to get the position plus another constant. I'm just going to write the letter K for constant. Okay. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to solve for the constant along the way. And how we solve for the constant along the way is with initial conditions. And typically, the initial conditions that will be given for um, one of these velocity acceleration position problems is I'll be given initial velocity which is the velocity when the time is zero. And I'll be given the initial position or initial height. Again, that corresponds to when t is zero. So I'm going to show you a problem where we are given the acceleration and we work backwards to get the velocity function and the position function given initial conditions. Okay. So more, the most common um, problems that you'll see have to do with projectile motion, so like throwing a rock, throwing a baseball, that kind of thing. And um, acceleration in that case is gravity. So when we're talking about throwing something up in the air, acceleration is just gravity. Now, since we're throwing it up in the air, what happens is gravity is working in the opposite direction. So typically, you'll see gravity as a negative number. So if we are working in the metric system, it is negative 9.8, and that's meters per second squared. And if we're working in, um, <laughs> I want to say the American system, with feet in seconds, then it's negative 32 feet per second squared. Okay, so I'm going to do a problem start to finish um, that has us using gravity to work backwards with initial conditions so that I can get a velocity equation and a position function. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and try it, but obviously I need a little bit more space. So here's our example that we're going to do. It says a rock is thrown into the air with a velocity of 7 feet per second from an 80 foot tall cliff. Find the velocity and position functions given this information. Okay, so um, you'll notice it's in feet. So that means that I'm gonna use the gravity of negative 32. So that's my acceleration here. So my acceleration oops, is negative 32. Okay, so what I wanna do to get the velocity is I'm gonna integrate acceleration. And t is going to be my chosen letter because it's always um, with respect to time when we're talking about velocity and position in these cases. Okay. So if I want to integrate negative 32, I would get negative 32x, but because it's a dt, I'm going to write t. Okay. I'm going to add a constant. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so that's my velocity equation. Now, the idea is that I can solve for the C because I was given a fact. And what I was told, if I pan up, is that I am throwing the rock in the air with a velocity of 70 feet per second. So what that means is that when T is zero, velocity is 70. Okay, so I'm going to put 70 equals negative 32 times zero plus C. And I believe that I'm going to get C is, what is that, 102? Nope. It's not 102. This is zero. 70. All right. Even your teacher makes little mistakes, but I caught it. Okay. 
Now, I've boxed it up beautifully, but in reality, what I want to do is go back to our velocity equation and upgrade it. So actually, what I want to box up, after I did that nice little box, so we're going to come up here, and we're going to go, dun 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 velocity. Okay, now, that's my velocity equation. It's done. Beautiful. Now I want to find the position. So to find the position, I'm going to integrate this. So let's go over here. So to get the position, I want to integrate negative 32t plus 70dt. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and integrate this. So integration has a guide. Add a 1 and then divide. All right. And then 70 t plus c. Okay, let's clean it up just a little bit. So this position function is going to be negative 16 t squared plus 70 t plus that c. Okay, now I was given a fact about this rock. Um, initially, I was standing on top of an 80 foot tall cliff, apparently. All right, throw in this rock, angry at the world. Okay, so that means that when t is zero, um, the position is 80. So I'm going to plug that in. So I get 80 equals zero plus zero plus c. So c will equal 80. <coughs> Excuse me again. All right. So, what's my answer? My answer is I'm going to go back up to this position function and I'm going to upgrade it and I'm going to throw the 80 in. There it is. There's my position function for all relevant times t. That's my velocity function. And it all started just knowing gravity. Make sure that you use gravity as negative because it's acting in the opposite direction of what you're throwing your object. Okay, if this whole problem was in the metric system, I would have started off with negative 9.8 instead of negative 32. All right, good luck.